Today we have a very special tutorial. We're going to be making a cinematic planet of your own choosing. I'm going to show you the technique. We're going to go step by step, but you can make your world whatever you want to. This is going to be a very fun one. We're even going to be making a little moon that goes along with it, as you can see over here. And everything is completely procedural. It'll be done inside of Blender. No third party plugins or add-ons, no external textures or HDRIs. It's all going to be done in Blender procedurally. And we're just going to get started with a basic UV sphere. So if you guys want the final blend file as well, you can look in the description below. Um, I'll be uploading that to my Patreon. It's also a great way to support the channel. But with everything said, let's jump in and make a cinematic planet animation in Blender 4.2. Okay, so we're in Blender. Let's jump in. And this time we're just going to select the default cube and the light. And we're just going to delete those two by pressing delete. We'll leave the camera in the scene. Um, we're going to go Shift A and Shocker. We're going to go Mesh and add in a UV sphere. Who would have thought, hey? <laughs> okay, so with that done, let's really come here to our add UV sphere settings. Let's make this 64 just to double it. And this one over here will make that uh, 32. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our modifiers and we're going to go add modifier search and just type in sub and give it a subdivision surface, bump it up to, I guess we'll just leave it at one. But for the render here, we're going to actually bump that up to four. And I know that seems like a lot because um, looking at it, that seems like overkill. But because we're going to be actually quite close in, um, you could actually slightly notice that it's not um, perfectly round if you don't kind of do that. So keep that in mind. OK, so what we're going to do, we're going to go into our camera view by pressing zero on the camera and we're going to select our camera and just like you'd always move your camera in Blender, you can hit G and then hit the middle mouse button and just move your camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move in close and I'm going to change the pivot transform here to 3D cursor right there. And then I'm going to double tap R and just rotate my camera. So it's kind of more like looking from the front. And then at this point, I'll just rotate it a little bit. But the idea here is we want to kind of more facing kind of more front on almost like this. Okay, like that. And with our camera active, we're also going to come over to our camera properties and we're just going to make sure to take the focal length here and we're going to make that something like 280. So a really big focal length because it's kind of more like a space telescope. And we're just going to move the camera back like so. And what we'll do is we'll kind of come here and then kind of move it up, placing it right about here. And now with that done, what we're going to do, we're going to go over to our render settings. We're going to come here to our render engine, make sure to change it to cycles. Now, I definitely recommend if you have a GPU that you enable it in your preferences and then come here to device and make sure it's GPU compute. Um, that's going to help you a lot. If you only have a CPU on your computer, um, this might be a little bit of a tricky tutorial. It's still possible, but it's just going to take a little bit longer to render, but it's still possible. But definitely recommend using a GPU if you have one. Um, we're going to come down to our render here and we're going to change the max samples. Um, honestly, I would say 200 would be really good for this, but because I'm doing a tutorial, I'm going to go really low and just do 35. Okay. That'll probably result in me having a little bit of noise in my final render, even if the denoise are enabled, but I'm happy with that just doing the tutorial, but you guys can definitely bump that up. It's just going to take a bit longer to render. Okay. With that out of the way, let's go shift a and let's go over to our light options. We're going to add in a sunlight. I'm going to go G, a Z and move it up and we're going to move it up to a few meters above our sphere here. In fact, we should actually select the sphere here. We're just going to tab into edit mode and we're going to go S5 and hit enter. So we scaled it up five times and tab back out and we'll just grab the sunlight and just move it up even a little bit more. And we'll grab our camera and just go G, Y and just move it back just a little bit more. There we go. Kind of have the planet a little bit bigger. And you might run into a clipping issue eventually. So just with your camera selected, you can always go to your camera properties. You can go over here to viewport display, I think, or is it the camera drop down? Um, no, up here under the lens, I think it's the clip start and the clip end. So let's just make this to be safe 1,200 meters over here and a clip start will make it one meter. So now we shouldn't have too many issues with the clipping. Like I know it's a lot of things we're doing here to get set up. And once we have that done, we can just jump into our materials. But what we're going to do is just going to also select the light up here. And uh, we're just going to go over to our light properties and we're going to come into the strength and make it 10. And we can also just come here and go control B and just drag to limit the render 
to the camera. So we're just gonna drag over the camera. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have. Also come to your world um, properties and just come here to the color and change this value all the way down to black. Okay, and one more thing, almost forgot. With the light here, just go back to your light um, properties. To make this look a bit more realistic, we need to come here and take this angle and just increase it. And that's just gonna really soften this light up here for us. It doesn't look as sharp. That's gonna add a lot more realism to the sort of space look. And I might just rotate my sun just so it's coming a little bit more from the back. So this is kind of what we have. And if you wanted to, you can also rotate your light just to give it a bit more of an angle. All of that kind of looks really good. But the idea here is we have our planet and it's lit up and we have our camera. Okay, so let's select our planet here. Let's go over into our shading workspace. Make sure to go into your camera view again and then go Z and then go rendered. And we're gonna go here and click new and let's call this planet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, search and we're gonna get a noise texture. Make sure not to confuse it with the white noise. We want a noise texture. Place it over here. And we're gonna come here to this over here in the drop down, and we're gonna change it to ridged multifractal. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this factor and plug it into the base color. We're gonna go shift A, we're gonna click search, and we're gonna get a color ramp and place it on this cable. And let's come over here and change the detail to 15. The roughness will change to one. To Lake Canarity, we're gonna change that to a value of two. And we're gonna come here to the gain and I'm gonna go over value of 62. And what you're gonna see here, we already have this nice kind of looking texture here. But we can make this look even better. So let's come over here, we're gonna go Shift A, Search, and we're gonna get a texture and then type in coordinate. Grab it and we're gonna plug the generated into the vector here. Then we're gonna go shift a search. We're gonna get a mix color, grab it and place it on this cable. And this should be going into the A input here. And we're gonna leave it as a mix. Then we're gonna come and duplicate our noise texture here, bring it underneath the texture coordinate. And let's take this factor and plug it into the B over here. And let's also just take this um, generated coordinate and plug it into the vector of this new noise texture. And of this one here, we're gonna make it a value of 0 0.1. We're gonna to come to the roughness and make it 0 0.7. And we're gonna to come to the gain here and make it 90. And now you can see this is kind of all we have here. It's starting to look really good and um, just kind of like a planet sort of surface. And what we need to do now is we need to come over here to our color ramp. And this is my favorite part of the whole tutorial. This is really where you're gonna add your own kind of spin to your planet. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here to the color ramp and I'm gonna start by taking this valley here, I'm gonna drag it down, and I'm gonna grab it, and I'm gonna give it a color. I'm gonna kind of go with like a bluish kind of green color, like this. And then I'm gonna hit plus, to add in another slider here. And I'm gonna drag this one up, and I'm gonna give that sort of like a greenish color, kind of almost like something is growing on this planet. Okay, and you can add in as many of these as you want. You can keep going plus, and you can slide them around. You can slide this one up. I might make this one kind of like a darker kind of blue, but less saturated, something like that. And this is really cool. You can now really kind of make your own sort of alien planet here, like something like this. I think that looks really good. Might make this one a little bit darker. Yeah, it's looking really cool, okay? But it still is a little bit flat. We have kind of like this planet happening here now but it's still a little bit flat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our principle and we're gonna take this roughness all the way up because um, a planet's gonna have a lot of roughness in real life and it's not gonna look reflective at all. So something like 0.8 or 0.9 should be fine. And what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna go shift A, search, and we're gonna get a bump node, place it over here. We're gonna take this normal and plug it into normal of the principle. And then we're gonna take this noise texture here. We're gonna take that factor and plug it into the height. And we're gonna take the strength and make it something like 0 0.05. Okay, just a slight little bit of bump, but not too much. And now that's looking quite nice, but we can also take it a step further. By coming over here to our material output, and we're gonna come Shift A, Search, and we're gonna get a mix shader, place it over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and duplicate this principle and move it down. I'm gonna plug it into the bottom input. 
And I'm going to change this here to a kind of bluish, kind of atmospheric kind of color. And what we can do now, we can go Shift A, search, and get a layer weight. We can take the Fresnel and plug it into the factor. And then we can go Shift A, search, and get a color ramp. Place it on here. And then if you kind of view this in the surface input here, we can kind of just take it and just drag this black value up till we kind of only get the atmosphere kind of represented here in the outside. So now let's just plug the shader back in. And now you can see we kind of have like a bluish kind of color more towards the outside. And that's looking a lot better. Um, that just adds an extra little bit of realism. So this is it with, without it, and this is it with it. Just adds an extra little layer of realism. So now this planet is looking really good, but we're gonna add some clouds. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna grab our sphere here. We're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and right click. I'm gonna come up here and just double click and call it clouds. And what we're gonna do, instead of making a whole new material, we're gonna come here to where it says planets. And I'm just gonna click on this number here and that's gonna make it its own material. And we're just gonna call it clouds. And we're gonna tab into edit mode with this clouds selected. And we're just gonna press S 1.001 and we're gonna hit enter. So we're just scaling it up very, very slightly bigger than the original sphere. And we're gonna actually double click on the original sphere here and it's called planet. There we go. But we wanna make sure we have the cloud selected here. Let's tab back out. So now we have the shell around that has this clouds. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna actually come over here and we'll just get rid of this color ramp. And we're gonna just get um, bring down this bump and let's bring this principled in here. And we're gonna get rid of this layer weight and all of this. We're gonna get rid of this mix shader and let's just plug this principled into the surface. And let's um, get rid of this bottom principled. So all we have is these ones here, as you can see. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to go shift a search and get a mix and get a mix shader again, place it over here. And then we're going to grab the bottom input and just drag on it. And we're going to make this a transparent. So transparent over here, going into the middle. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take this noise texture. I'm gonna take that factor and just plug it in to the mix shader. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, you can see we have some clouds here, but they're not defined very well. So we're gonna go shift A, search, and just get a color ramp again and place it on here. Okay, so coming out of the noise texture and going into the mix shader. And then what we can do, we can just kind of drag this black value up almost all the way to the end and drag the clouds down. Just so we have something that looks more like this. And now we have clouds, but it's too many of them. So what we can do, we can come here to the scale on the noise texture and make it one. And we can come here to the color ramp and kind of switch these two around. So bring the white value in front of the black value. And now you can see we have some clouds on our planet. So as you can see, here are our nodes just in case you're wondering. Okay, so we're just using this noise as a mix for the mix shader and mixing the principled and the transparent. We're also gonna come to the base color and just make sure it's a pure white color over here. And now that we have this happening here with the clouds, what we're gonna do is we can go ahead and go over to our world properties. We already changed this to a black color, but what we can do, we can come here and change this to world drag it up and this is coming here and go shift a search and let's get a Voronoi texture. Let's come here to where it says F1 and let's make that smooth F1. Let's plug in the distance over here into the color. Let's make the scale 4000. And now let's go over here and go Z and go rendered. And you can see this is the background we have in our world. But we're gonna go shift a search and get a color ramp node. I'm going to place it on here and let's drag this black value up and this white value down and kind of swap them around and then let's just bring this black closer and closer till we get those stars kind of looking a little bit more the way we want. So now we get to have this kind of nice stars in the background. Okay. So what we can do for now is let's grab our planet. We're going to go shift D to duplicate the planet, move it up and go S to scale. Okay, we're just gonna scale it down. You can add a planet in here. So I might put mine right over here. Okay. 
And with this, let's just change our, um, it back to object here so we can work on that shader. And what we can do, we can click on this little number here and then make it its own material. Let's call it moon. And what we can do here is just come and change the scale here to point one. And now if you go Z and go render, this moon has its own material. And I'm just going to come here and change some of these, get rid of them and just kind of make it two colors. So something like a darkish kind of blue. And this one I'll kind of make gray. So kind of just make a moon for the planet here. And um, I might just grab that atmosphere. Instead of getting rid of it, I'll just make it a little bit darker. Who knows, maybe this moon just has a slight atmosphere, but there we go. We now have a moon for our planet and I'll just bump the strength of this bump node up. So now we kind of have like a rocky moon around a planet. Okay, that's optional, but I think that looks really good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our layout and I'm just gonna go render and just do a render of this image. And there we have it, it's done rendering and you can see it looks absolutely amazing. But what we can do, we can make this even better by going over to our compositing, click on use nodes up here, and then just go shift a search and get a viewer node. Whoops, viewer. And let's plug this in here. And you can hold in shift and right click and just kind of drag over these two cables to cut them together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift a search, we're gonna get a glare node. And let's place it on here let's come here and change it from streaks to fog glow. And by default, this actually looks pretty good. So I might actually leave it like that, but you can bring down the threshold if you want to have more of an atmospheric kind of effect, like a glow. But I'm just going to go for something like 0.9 should be fine. And I might just bring down that size to about seven. For me, that looks really good. But you can see now we have this nice sort of glow on our planet. Pretty cool. So now all you have to do is go back to your layout. And you can go to your material out, um, your output here. Go to your output settings and select somewhere like your desktop. And then you can choose what you want to render it out as. Now I would recommend you render out PNG sequences and compile them together. But if you wanted to do a direct video, you can change this to FFmpeg video. And under the encoding, if you wanted to, you can change the container to an MP4. And then in that case, all you have to do is go render and render out the animation. But other than that, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading this to my Patreon, the final blend file. If you guys want to um, check that in the description, that's also a great way you can support the channel. And thank you for watching this Cinematic Planet tutorial.